Every now and then, someone asks why we have Craigslist videos like this one on our channel, a channel with the word science in its name. It's a good question. The most straight up answer I can give you, and perhaps the most blunt, is that you guys enjoy the content for the most part. Some of you hate it, and that's fine. Don't watch this video. That's why titles exist. That's why thumbnails exist. They give you an idea of what the video will be like. And if what we post in the thumbnail and title doesn't please you or get you excited, then by all means, don't click the video. You can still watch the video if you want, support us, and that is appreciated even if you already know what the topic is about and maybe you already know the answer to the question perhaps that we ask in the video. It doesn't matter. Like The fact is, you can choose to watch what you want. So do that. That said, I think videos like these, when done in moderation, can still be valuable to the viewer on an informative level because there are several questions many of you tend to have when it comes to the value of used components. And when you find a PC on a site like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace listed for sale, it's first off inherently used, so then how much less should you pay for used components? And then on top of that, it's already assembled, so you should technically pay a little more for a assembled PC, right? Because that's work, that's time, that's someone's labor that you're paying for, then how much labor should you expect to pay for a given build? There are a lot of questions that go through a buyer's mind, especially a used buyer, and there are a lot of inherent risks as well, and we try to dive into all of those in these kinds of videos. With that said, we have a Facebook Marketplace ad that I think is just a bit outlandish, and you're gonna see why here shortly. We've also put together a PC parts picker link and uh, actually built something pretty similar to this system using second gen, or actually third gen Ryzen, I almost said second gen Ryzen, but it's Zen 2. Uh, so if you're interested in something like that, you can check it out in the video description. We put something similar together when we were benchmarking the 3900X. Needless to say though, this person's PC is, uh, it's, yeah, it's worth nowhere near $2,300. So we're gonna swing on over to the PC and I'm gonna give you the rundown. If you're rocking the Windows 10 operating system and haven't activated your copy, click the link below and purchase an OEM license from SCD key. Then click here, 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 and then here, paste your activation key, and you'll have a fully activated OS in seconds. And be sure to use my offer code SStudio for an 18% discount on your order. So the title says, high-end gaming PC, Threadripper CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, dual GPUs, 1070 Ti, and, uh, RX uh, 470. I mean, there are a few scenarios where having two different cards from totally different manufacturers, two different architectures, families, everything, can work together in tandem. Uh, if you want to talk about something like explicit multi-adapter, which we covered in a really old video, you can check it out up here if you're really curious, uh, then yeah, pairing two different cards like this would be, I mean, vi it'd be viable. I don't know if you'd want to say feasible, but it's possible to get them to work together. Issue is explicit multi-adapter is not like a thing. It's not something that a lot of games take advantage of. In fact, the only game I tested it in was Ashes of Singularity and like nobody plays that game, right? So yeah, onto the price, $2,300. And off the top of my head, I can already tell you this is gonna be a bad deal. This is a CyberPower PC. I'm not sure, I guess it was a, yeah, I guess it was a pre-built. 32 gigs of Trident Z DDR4 at 3000 megahertz, 512 gig WD Black, M.2 SSD. He's got a five terabyte, what is this? Five terabyte, uh, it doesn't even have a, a company name. So, all right, that's weird. Gigabyte, what is this? Aorus X399 Gaming 7, okay. And he has a ATNG 1000 watt, 80 plus gold power supply. I'm not sure what ATNG is, it's a little weird. MSI GeForce GTX 1070 Ti. And then he's got the Sapphire Radeon RX 478 gigs kind of confusing and he's got Windows 10 Pro on the PC so this is this is just a cluster so before we actually price this thing out in PC part picker I want to take a look at some of the other pictures he has here cable management is questionable at best it looks like he used the rubber grommets which is nice some people don't on these sites but for some reason he's got the cables from the fans from, like from the motors themselves removed from the chassis and just like straight up dangling there uh, in front of the AIO block. I don't I don't know what his thought process was here. He could have routed these. Maybe the cables were just too short. I'm not sure. It just looks tacky in my opinion, especially when those cables, uh, when those wires, I guess I should say, are not blacked out. They're like green and yellow and yeah, it's just, it just it's just weird. And then you've got these two graphics cards and like you, you just, your head just starts spinning because if you know anything about PCs, you know that these two cards won't work together for really 
any gamer, like in any game for that matter, most most games like will not take advantage of that second card at all. And uh, yeah, he doesn't say what he has it in here for. In fact, somebody who has, who knows next to nothing about PCs and just wants to buy a really beefy system could potentially buy this and think that both of the cards would work fine in gaming. And and it's that's not the case. So there's no disclosure of that. There's no clarification. I feel like that's slightly misleading. Uh, yeah, we'll just. <laughs> We'll just leave it at that. Now onto the PC part picker list, and I'm going to be upfront with you here. I couldn't find exactly what he had, uh, especially in stocks. So some of the prices aren't really there for Amazon and Newegg. Also, specifically to the guy who's suing me right now, if you have a problem with me using Outlet PC as one of my sources in PC part picker, you can pack sand because I'm going to keep using it. If I was building this PC, I would totally use Outlet PC. So anyway, 1950X from Outlet PC, a little under $500. Corsair H80i, this isn't the same AIO, but it's a similar one for a hundred bucks. You could get cheaper AIOs if you wanted. I just wanted one in similar size and from a reputable company. And then we have an ASRock X399 Gaming 6 for a little over $200 from Newegg. Not the same motherboard, but pretty close. Next up, we have the G-Skill Trident ZRGB kit that he had, only ours is slightly faster. You could definitely get cheaper 32 gig kits online, but I wanted to go with the same models and uh, even slightly faster than what he has for a little over 200 bucks. Again, you could go much cheaper. I just want to emphasize that. Uh, Seagate, five terabyte, 5900 RPM drive. He listed a 7200 RPM drive, but uh, he didn't list the specific brand. So I'm choosing the cheapest five terabyte I can find at 150 bucks in stock on Amazon. Western Digital Black NVMe 500 gig drive, pretty fast here for 110 bucks. MSI GTX 1070 Ti. This is where I had to modify something. The price here is modified to account for the two cards that he has in his system that again, don't work together. The Sapphire RX, was it 470, 570, doesn't matter, eight gig card. I found those going for around a hundred bucks on eBay, maybe a little cheaper, but I said a hundred bucks to give him the benefit of the doubt. And then 1070 Ti's going rate for those was around $300. So that's how I came to the $400 figure. It accounts for both of those discrete GPUs. And then the NZXT H500 case was the one that I chose because it wouldn't make sense first off paying full retail price for a used case in my opinion they're already pretty cheap to begin with and i think the h500 is a better case for most people he wasn't even populating all of his drive base so there's really no need in my opinion for a full tower and then i have the rosewell 1050 watt 80 plus gold certified power supply fully modular for 121 dollars on outlet pc and this was pretty much the same wattage as his unit and the same efficiency rating. I just chose Rosewell because it was cheap. We have a total price of $1,870. So just under, just under $1,900. We could round it to $1,900 if you really wanted. Uh, but that's still less than what he's asking by about four or $500. Yeah, somewhere around there. And that's, I'm not seeing it not seeing it. I mean, this is kind of a compounding issue for me because even if he was asking exactly what we could build it for, let's say he was asking $1,870. The problem I have with it then is, well, it's used. Why, why would I buy your system used if I could buy it myself new, you know? Like, why would I do that? I mean, unless you didn't want to build it, but even then I would say it takes, I mean, it's pretty easy to learn how to build a PC. It's not a rocket science. And on top of that, you're gonna learn something, you'll probably have fun doing it, you might find a new hobby. Granted, it can be an expensive hobby, I'll give you that, but it's fun at the same time. And uh, yeah, so, I mean, $2,300, there's just no, we're not even in the same ballpark here. For a used system, you're also asking more than retail for that system. Doesn't make sense, no, doesn't compute. I'm, my brain's overloading, I, I, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Now, if you have to ask what I would pay for this system, it'd be somewhere in the, 1400 dollars $1, maybe $1,500, maybe. And that's only because I know I could sell that graphics, at least one of those graphics cards, right away for a decent chunk of change. And that would leave me with just over a $1,000 system, depending on which card I sold. And I think at a thousand bucks for a 16 core, original Zen architecture, Threadripper chip, like that's not bad. You know, if you're stuck with an RX 570 or whatever this card is, then that's fine too. You know, it's still a decent system for 1080p gaming, even some like 1440p stuff. and. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a Threadripper platform, and it's the oldest Threadripper chip, you know? But you could still do a lot with it. I'll give them that, and I think asking over $1,000 at that point is justified, but how much more, especially if we're taking out, like, the 1070 Ti? I just don't, I don't know. As is, I don't see any more than $1,500. So to recap then, I wouldn't spend any more than about 1500 bucks on that system. 
you might be willing to pay a little more. You might be willing to pay a little less and no, maybe no more than like $1,400 or $1,300. Value is inherently subjective, but there are certain aspects about the word value that are objective. For instance, there is the going rate, the market rate for certain items that would be what you could get in exchange for that item in cash on the used market. In fact, eBay will even sometimes give you an estimate as to what the going rate for a particular SKU or product is. The 1070 Ti I showed you earlier, I priced at 300 bucks because I saw this right here. And that suggests that a majority of people are listing and selling their cards for around this price. It's kind of an average of sorts. With that, let me know in the comments below if you think my $1,500 asking price is fair or not. Do you think that that's a little too much? Maybe a little too less? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm ripping the guy off. I mean, you never know. Some people would, I'm sure, think something obscure like that. But in my opinion, I think asking a little under what you could build a similar system for in PC Part Picker is reasonable because, again, used parts aren't worth what they are new. It's about like driving a car off a lot, although depreciation in that respect is a bit more exaggerated. I would say with PC parts, you could get roughly what you paid for your system as long as the parts in question are not a generation or two old. By that point, you usually have replacement parts that can be purchased for around the same price that you paid for your system two years ago. And that would mean that your system is now suddenly worth less. So don't always rely on the going rates of parts like an eBay and whatever. I mean, you could possibly get more if you live in a town where there's not uh, an abundance of PC tech. Maybe you could seize and take advantage of that market a bit better. And look, that's totally legal. I'm not going to cap you for that. But if you start asking, you know, for a thousand dollars over what I think you should for a product, then uh, you might just fall in line in a crisis video on the iRead playlist. You don't want to be on the iRead playlist. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Thumbs up, thumbs down. You know what to do. Click that red subscribe button. Become a member if you're feeling especially fancy. And I will catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for watching again. And thanks for learning with us.